Hey everybody, Jared here, and so I have a bizarre one today. I have an old DVD. How old is it? Look at this, this old DVD. Look at full-size case. This DVD is a DVD-R that I recorded in 2000, and it's my trip to France, Japan, and Scotland. So I made a DVD many years ago. Let's pretend I don't know where the files are, and I want the files back. So what you need to know is, is that DVDs, video DVDs, properly encoded video DVDs, are data disks. And inside that data, buried inside that data, is the MPEG-2 file that the data was made up of. Also the menus and other types of things. So you can't just copy the files to your hard drive. Well, you can copy them to your hard drive, but they're not just video files at that point. So you need to copy the data and extract it and convert it back to the MPEG that it was started with. Now what's neat about this is, is that when I turn a DVD back into an MPEG file, I'm not actually doing any degradation. The same file that is in a different format on this disk is the same file that comes out. So I don't lose any quality when I rip the disk. Notice by the way I'm using a homemade DVD. If I were to use a commercial DVD, those are encrypted. And while technically it's possible to do that, it's not advised and it's frequently illegal. So we're going to avoid talking about the encrypted disk. Let's just talk about your old homemade DVDs. What's fun about this one is, is it deals with several different scenarios that I want to go over right now. So let me pop the disk in the drive. That's the first thing you need, by the way, is a DVD drive. Let me pop the disk in the drive and we'll actually open it in my favorite video player, which is going to be VLC. The VLC media player is wonderful because it plays everything. So wait for the disc to spin up. It's an old disc, and the older the disc, the longer it takes to spin up. Matter of fact, that's one of the really tricks is we forget that old discs sometimes degrade over time, and that's one of the reasons that when we used to make DVDs, we would try to use better quality materials and burn them slower. The slower you burn them, sort of the deeper the groove, the better they are. So this disc is France, Japan, Scotland 2000. Notice, by the way, it looks a little bit grainy. And that's because it is. Let me come over here and turn off Always Fit to Wallpaper. This is the native resolution of a DVD. This is the whole 720 by 480 thing that a DVD is. Standard definition. That's what we're looking at here. Now, this DVD is interesting because it has three titles and multiple tracks. Titles, by the way, are individual videos. So if I were to clip, uh, click on Scotland 2000, this is one video, but each of these is a chapter point in that same video. So technically it's one video broken down to chapter points, and we're not going to keep the chapter points, but I can click along, and if I click on Sterling, you'll see, you know, it, it'll come along and play in a moment as it slowly goes through and does this. It's very, very slow. Um, there we go. And you can see we're already f so far into the disc already. And right now what I'm looking at is it's slow because it's trying to catch up with the disc. It's an old disc. One of the things that happens sometimes is we'll actually copy the disc to a folder on the hard drive so it doesn't do this really, really slowness anymore. And that's always make our lives a little bit easier. But we're going to start off by pretending that we can just work from the disc itself. Let me come back over here to my... Um, let me come back over to my title DVD menu. And again, most of the DVDs you're going to have are going to have just one title in them, one title, because that tends to be what most people made homemade DVDs with. A lot of people didn't even make chapter points. I was being fancy. I made menu and chapter points and multiple titles. All right, let's come back over here and see if, oh, it's loading. All right, let's load it again. Let's come over here to my... There it is. Now, if I come over here and open up the drive, you're going to see that's got a video TS folder, and all the data is in this video TS folder. Matter of fact, this video TS folder is what I could copy to the hard drive if I wanted to make sure that things were going to copy uh, fine. In other words, I can copy from the DVD to the hard drive and then process it from the hard drive, or I can try to process directly from the DVD itself. One other thing I want to do, though, I'm going to come back over here and click Play with VLC Media Player. Watch it load up again. If I come over here to the France clip, you'll notice that it's got a little letterboxing to it. And that's because this was taken off of a camera that was widescreen. So you'll see that there's black bars on the top and bottom. And that's because of the way that the data was encoded on this one. It's a different clip, which we're going to see again in a moment. All right. So this is me walking very slowly. All right. Now, let's go to handbrake. Handbrake. 
Handbrake, load handbrake. Handbrake is a great tool for this. Oh, look, open this DVD. It's right there for me. I click on open it. Now, the number one mistake you're going to make is by just thinking you're done and you're not. You have to think through the situation. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually not going to turn it from uh, the DVD back to an MPEG-2. We're actually going to make it into an MPEG-4. The MPEG-2 standard is uh, kind of dated at this point, and the files are very, very big. The MPEG-4 files are going to be much smaller. If you'll notice, though, right now it's telling me that I have Title 1, Title 2, Title 3. See that? There are multiple titles. Um, this one's 35 minutes. This one's 54 minutes. This one's 34 minutes. But the real trick to this is that the preset is wrong. The preset is 1080p at 30 frames per second. And my video is 720 by 480 interlaced at 29.97 frames per second. So the idea is if I were to click go right now, it would try to up res my video, which I don't want it to do. I've got other software for that. And also that takes an enormous amount of time and you don't want to rip and up res at the same time. So I'm gonna come back to presets and I'm gonna come over here to general and I'm gonna choose fast 480p 30. And what that means is it's gonna give me 480 lines, as you can see over here where it's 480 lines, and 30 frames per second is again the right thing. So we went from, from 720 by 480, 29.97, fast 480, 30. Now, if I come back over here, uh, you'll notice by the way it says 702 by 372. That's the actual size of my video. It's just because of the way this one's encoded. If I were to click on the second clip, you'll see that 708 by 480, and this one is 708 by 480. Again, the source files were different. The videos that were encoded in the first place are different. Don't worry about it. Just understand if the numbers look different, it's because you don't know how the video was made in the first place. But what we do know is, is that 480 is the right number. If I click on video, you're gonna see the frame rate is 30 frames per second, but it really was 29.97. So I'm gonna click as same as source. And I'm gonna do this for each one of my video files. So for number two, I'm gonna go over to video and I'm gonna do same as source. And for number one, I'm gonna come over to video and make sure it's set to same as source. One, two, three. All right, they're all done. Same as source is very, very important. And what that's going to do is, is it's going to make sure that the video isn't going to be changed much. Um, we're also leaving everything as constant quality. Um, right now it's got variable frame rate. We're going to leave it as constant frame rate as well. Um, these are just certain things that I want to double check along the way. I think once I change it, it changes for all three. I want constant frame rate. The idea being is, is that I want to make sure they're the most compatible videos you can. If you ever deal with variable frame rate videos, you'll find that later on it's almost impossible to edit them in any editing programs without any stutters. So to recap, the big thing is as follows. Number one, make sure that we're dealing with the same resolution, 480, 480. The second was we were dealing with 30 frames per second, but I'm actually changing it to same as source with a constant frame rate. And this way, it's not going to try to turn that 29.97 into something else. And that'll make my life a lot easier. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to look at, I need to worry about. One of the other things that we, we have to worry about is this thing called de interlacing. Now, what de interlacing is, is that right now, Video is interlaced. These DVD video is interlaced. And it's interlaced like this. So every other line of resolution is called the odds and the evens. Now, what we could do is we could de-interlace the video. And when you de-interlace the video, what that does is you can use different settings. You can either use DCOM or YADIF. And what that'll do is it'll try to blend the two, free, the two fields back together to create something else. It's very, very useful to do this because otherwise you'll notice in fast motion these weird little lines. I'm actually not going to do it at all. The reason I'm not going to do it at all is for a very different reason. So if you look over here, there's the uh, Yadif, which is the popular and fast interlacer, and the Decom, which has multiple versions. I'm going to turn mine to off. And the reason I'm going to turn mine to off is, and you are not going to turn yours to off, is that I've got multiple video editing programs that will allow me to de-interlace later. So basically what I'm doing is, is I'm basically taking, telling Handbrake to go into the DVD, take those MPEG-2 video files, bring them back to me in the same way, at the same resolution, at the same frame rate. 
it's still going to turn into an MPEG-4 file, which is going to be smaller, but it's going to make it so that I have something that I can work with a little bit later on. If you are planning this is the end of it, you want to do one and done, then you definitely want to do the 480, and you definitely want to do the 29.97 or the same frame rate, but I would leave the deinterlacing onto one of the deinterlaced solutions, and that'll make your life a little bit better. The trick is, is that if you deinterlace, this process will take longer. Next, where am I going to put it? Let me browse to the folder I've made called From DVD, right there. Now, um, you're saying, why is it M4V if it's MP4? Don't worry, it'll fix itself later on. And let's take a look. One last thing. So summary. Um, see, that's, that's interlacing right there. Dimensions. Filters. Deinterlace. Let me double check that it's all. It should be all three of them automatically, but I always double check. Video is same as source. The video codec is H.264. Again, I could have done uh, MPEG-2, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it to H.264 with a constant frame rate that is same as source. I'm going to do the constant quality, um, which I'm set to 20 because that was the default. Um, audio, I'm leaving the audio alone. Subtitles, I don't have any. And then chapters, uh, they'll, they're going to create chapter markers, but I have no idea what that's actually going to do for me later on. All right, so now that I'm ready to go, I can click on, let me click on the first one, and then I click Add to Queue. And if I click on Q, you're going to see that it's going to tell me that I've got my first video. Then I'm going to click on my second title, and I'm going to click Add to Queue. And now I've got two videos. And then I'm going to click my third video, and I'm going to click Add to Queue. And now I have three videos. And now I hit Start Queue and it's going to process the video. Now, if you're wondering what is the slow part of the processing of the video, it's several fold. Number one, it's got to process all this video. Number two, it is the speed of that DVD drive and the age of that disc. So right now, it's, it says that it's going to take, it's going really fast, wow. It says that the first video is going to take seven minutes to encode, which is pretty good since that first video was 35 minutes long. So that's the end of that, and I'm assuming it's going to take about, I guess, uh, about a half an hour before this is all done, so I will see you in half an hour. All right, so we only have two seconds left on the first file, and there it is. It says that it is good to go. All right, so where did the file go? Um, uh, so it's under the videos. Um, there it is. Date modified. There it is. So if you look over here, there it is, 2001.m4v. That file, by the way, is 926 megabytes. That's not bad. Let's take a look at it inside of VLC. All right. You see lots of those little wiggly lines. That's okay. We knew they were going to be there. And again, they were expected because they were expected because that's the way this was encoded in the first place. You'll notice, by the way, there's actual chapter points, and that's because the video file does retain the chapter points, which is pretty wild. And if I come over here to Video uh, Tools Media Information, I can look at the codec and find out that there it is, 702 by 372, which is what it was originally, 29.97 um, frames per second. And there you go. So I have converted, ripped, and turned this file into another file. And you're like, but it's not an MPEG-4. It's an M4V. It's an MPEG-4. There you go. You happy now? All right. So anyway, um, now if you're wondering about, again, the interlacing and little jagged edges and things like that, you know, don't worry too much. Again, I'm leaving it there on purpose for my video because I'm going to fix it later in, in, in another video program. But for your purposes, you definitely want to leave the interlacing, the deinterlacing turned on. Have this program do the work for you, and that'll make your life a little bit easier. This way, you'll get progressive video, which means that the lines will be, each frame will be one full frame. All right, I think this is a good starting point. I know I didn't answer every question that you would have, but go ahead and uh, ask some questions in the comments. It's a good starting point for me. Reach out to me and we'll go again from there. My name's Jared and I hope your video rips as well as mine just did. Thanks, bye-bye.